This video will demonstrate how to use the ESO Solutions Fire Data Entry portion. Uh, this is the same program we're currently using on the uh, EMS side uh, to input patient data. Uh, all the desktops at our stations currently have the uh, ESO icon uh, to use the system. Just double click on it and it will pull up this um, login form. Your username is going to be your first initial followed by your last name and then your password for all the new firefighters who are not currently using the ESO solutions and you do not have a password it will be password one and uh, once you enter that it will prompt you to make a new password which will be specific only to you. And once you enter that in you hit your agency is Bryan County but the county is abbreviated, so it's Brian Co. Okay, this is the home screen. It has a calendar, weather, and uh, depending on your certification, if you EMT firefighters will have this to enter uh, EMS reports. But if you're strictly a firefighter, you will only have the fire logo. Uh, right here but you and I have all this other information but you just double click on that basically when you um, start entering data into the to the database you will see it's kind of based on the NIFR system so it's it's the same um, like I said, same basis as that, but it's a little bit easier to use. Okay, this is where you go to add a report. As you see, you have add, EPCR import, and then once you start putting in a report, these will become active. Uh, this is a neat feature right here. If um, This kind of e imports from the EPCR, which is uh, the EMS side. If the ambulance goes to the fire with you and they put in the data prior to you, or if they Say, for instance, you respond to a fire and they transport someone with smoke inhalation. You can click on EPCR import and it will pull up EMS runs. You will not see their name, but the patient's name, but you will see the incident. So if the same incident matches up with where you went on the same fire, you can click on this and it will import a lot of your uh, data in for you. But most of the time you'll just be hitting add. Okay, this is the main screen. You see you have uh, basic one and basic two. As you start adding uh, information in, basically it kind of is based on the type, the fire or casualty hazmat, arson, wildland modules may light up. If you remember in the NIFRS, you had to add them manually. These will light up and add them for you. Um, your first box here is the, your incident number. This is populated by itself. You need to take that out and just put in the year, the last two digits of the year, the month, and a three digit CR, uh, CRN. If it's three, it'll be 003. And your NIFRS number is automatically populated for you. you. You have your date here, which is automatically populated also. Anytime you see a field with red, this little red triangle, that is a mandatory field. Uh, you have to, to enter all these in or you will not be able to validate your you report and then lock it. Uh, all reports must be validated completely and locked. As you see at the bottom you have a live validation area. As you enter information in this number will drop down until you have zero. But right now based on these two basic one to two modules we have 19 violations of uh, validation here. We just click on your type. If it's a fire you see they're all right here. This one will say we have a false alarm just to make it easy. And there's another field, it's kind of be more specific. Okay, the injury or death field, hopefully will this will always be none. This is your aid given or received basically for mutual aid. If Richmond Hill responds with you, of course, then you're gonna put receive. Or if you went to Richmond Hills area or Pembroke area, you will add uh, given. 
But for this one, we're going to say none. Action taken. I'm going to say we just did other. Now you can scroll down to location, location type. Same as Niffers. It's going to be a street address. And what is the main purpose of the um, property? We're going to say it's a one or two family dwelling. Street or highway. Up here, you can put in the number, but it's not mandatory. The street is mandatory. And your city. You could put in a, if you put in your city, you would click on it and it will automatically populate the state and zip code for you. So you put your alarm times. And up here you can put any kind of property uh, owner's name or a person who was there. Owner goes down here. Like I said, these are not red. They're not mandatory. You can put it in there if you have it. As you see, we put in that amount of information. We've already dropped down to eight validation issues. Okay, once you have that, Fill in, go to your basic two. On this, you can add in the apparatus and personnel that responded. If you just click add, this apparatus box, you use a drop down. You see all the personnel, engines have already been added. See if engine 11 went. You see, they, they were there for suppression. You could also add ambulances and other people also. You see, you can start adding all of our firefighters, medics are in here. You can start adding. This is a neat field. You can also put what that person did. You know, if he did search and rescue, you can add that. Just start adding and people. The action is not mandatory, but you can put it in there if you need to. And it's just more times of the apparatus. This is the amount of people that came to the scene. It's the apparatus, we had one apparatus, two personnel, and then if the ambulance came, you could also put the amount of apparatus came. Any, anybody else that came in private vehicles, you could add that also. You can put in who wrote the report, officer in charge, you can put a narrative. Uh, one of the neat things about this feature is if you have two uh, firefighters on the scene, uh, one wants to put a narrative in, another one can come back in and add to the narrative. The good thing about that, one firefighter cannot remove what another firefighter wrote. They can just add to it. So that's a good safety issue. You can click down the bottom. It shows you what you've you've done wrong, like I say, this alarm date is for arrival. And there's some other or apparatus that need to go back and change. And you can click on that as we just did and it will take you exactly where you need to go. As you see I changed that and I only have two. I can click on it again. 
and it would take me back where I need to go. You see it says alarm date and time must be before arrival. changing that it kind of you see it may have changed another kind of increased your validation issues you may have to go back and change other fields to match we can update that basically you're just going to keep clicking through it until you have no validation issues. If we go back to the basic here, I'll show you we can change the incident type. Just click on this arrow. If you click, we want to make it a fire, a structure fire, the building fire. You see, once we did that, this fire module lit up, so you have to do everything in this tab also. But once you get, once you're finished, you should have zero validation issues. You can lock the report. Up here at the top, it shows your incident number. You can also click and add, and you can add another exposure up here. And you can also delete it the same way. But it's pretty simple to use. You'll find all the apparatus in there, uh, all the employees. If you find someone who's not in there, please do not hesitate to call or email me and let me know and I can add them. Or if there's any um, other issues that you have, please do not hesitate to call in and let us know. I uh, hope you'll enjoy this. This seems to be a little bit easier than NIFRS. Um, we had a lot of problems with the NIFRS locking up on, on everyone. It was just not very user friendly, but this is a a whole lot better. It kind of ties in with our EMS uh, program also and keeps everybody uh, using the same um, type of program. Like I said, uh, let us know if you have any issues and I hope you enjoy this uh, program.